of skirmishing with Starnold. We are here today legionnaireing with Tank 943 and his W-Uni 2 crew. Um, myself and Merrick are legionnaireing, we're from W-Uni, we are sister clans, we hang out in the same team, speak together, um, and we are a little bit familiar with each other. Um, we find ourselves on Mountain Pass in a fairly quick setup. Four Croms, a 237, a 23045s uh, against a not as quick. Uh, they had two Skodas, two Croms, um, and some other tanks. And the call goes out initially um, send the T37 to the bridge. He's going to scout that, and if he doesn't see anything, he's going to proceed forward. And then the rest of us are going to go up what used to be called the Ice Road, and we'll just have the 3045s in the front with the Cromwells in the back. So that's the initial call, and really, this whole match, the reason I'm showing you this one, um, is to show you the proper way to do capping in the end. Um, we, we end up doing a fast cap, and I want to show you the results of our fast cap, and one of the most effective fast caps I've seen in a long time. So we spot the Skoda, T-37 spots both Skodas. Um, the call goes out to proceed forward, and now we've dedicated ourselves to a fast gap. All we see is the Skodas. We don't have the other Kramis. We don't know where the Stir or the 3045 or the Poodle are. So now since we're going to fast cap, we're not going to leave the 3045s in front anymore. We're just going to charge forward with whoever's quickest. And the, initial, the call is exactly this. First three tanks on the cap, and everybody else screen forward. So since we know they're not behind us, everybody else is supposed to go through the cap or around the cap and get between the enemy tanks and us. So we have one, two, three on. Merrick goes forward. Uh, we spot a tank up at the top, so tank 943 is going to go up after him couple shots into them. Now I should have moved here because we got spotted and they dropped party. I should have moved before I did. Um, we took both both of our tanks took a little bit of damage from the arty. So now they're desperate. We have three tanks on. They have to get back to us. And this is what I wanted to show you. Watch the focus fire. Three shots and this guy is dead. He never gets a chance to shoot the guys in the cap. Uh, the guy that was up on the top, he falls off because he was going to get killed anyways. And now a Skoda comes running over, and boom, boom, and boom, he's dead. Focus fire while in the cap. It was just unbelievable. They had no chance. That's all I really wanted to show you there. Um, key to that is always first three on, everybody else screens. And that's the way it needs to be done. Um, so now I wanted to show you some, what I considered exceptional calling on the part of Tank 943. Here we are faced with... PWN and NZ, Pones, Owns, whatever you want to call them. Four light tanks, three 3045s, and what might as well be one in a Rudy. Now we looked at this and we're outclassed here. So they are like all purple and, and heavy blue. We've got like maybe one blue guy and a bunch of orange and yellow guys. Maybe not orange, but yellow. Um, so we know they're good. Just the fact that they brought that lineup suggests that they think they're good. So we don't want to be outspotted, so we're going to try to disable their spotting by going to the city. Our light tank spots two of their lights right off the bat. We all turn and try to get shots on them. And we get a couple. Okay, now they're down one light tank, and our light tank survived that. Now the call is finish your way out to the city, get into cover. They know we're here, get into cover. Um, I have shots, so I'm taking them. Our T-37 dies. We weren't surprised that was going to happen regardless. And a reminder, get in the cover. Get in the city and get in the cover, because we don't know where their tanks, where the rest of their tanks are. They have so many light tanks, they could be anywhere. I wasn't fast enough. I'm going to pause here for a second. Try to get unspotted before continuing on. Oh, 
Okay, so it is get safe, get in cover, and wait for something to happen. At the same time, you want to be able to shoot the field. So this is what I'm thinking here. I don't want to go in with everybody else because they still have their arty available, and if we're clustered, they're going to spot us and arty us. So I think I'm in cover here. I get spotted, probably by Type 64s. I get shot by the two guys in the middle, so I back off and I get safe, and I get shot from the left. Unbelievable, the Type 64s are already to our left. So I got shot by two different Type 64s. I let my commander know, and now since he knows that there's two out there and at least the Rudy in the middle, he says tells everybody else to push forward. So we think we have an overmatch here, so we take our remaining tanks, and we're going to push on the guys that are here. So we have four of us, and we're pushing on two or three. Pretty even game right now. But their Type 64s there aren't in the battle right now, so we do have the overmatch, and we are winning this overmatch, which is what usually happens. Type 64s finally get in the battle, but we concentrate our fire to finish off the Rudy. And now it's just two Type 64s against our 43045s. Well, two Proms and two 3045s. So, to me, this was impressive because tank was making these calls on the fly. I mean, a lot of us think that we can make these calls, but some, sometimes if you're too slow, it doesn't work. So those Type 64s were behind us, and if they just, if we'd have waited, then they would have come up behind us and everybody would have swarmed us. The timing was so perfect and so quick that we were able to get out of range of the Type 64s and get in on those other tanks and finish them off. It was a great battle, and we felt really good after that one. We faced nothing but top teams all night long. We, we faced, um, here we have we have OPEC we're going to show you, another top clan. That one was a top one. Um, we faced two or three others that were like top 10 or top 20 teams all night long. So here we have Lakeville. Um, again, we're faced with a very fast three light tanks, two Cromwells, and we only have the three Cromwells in the type and we know that they are very good. Um, so, I mean, they have OPIC, Tier 6, and Fate guys on their team, all, and a Relic 2. So, we're kind of, we're not gonna be aggressive, we're kinda gonna camp the valley here. Um, it takes us a little bit to get organized because none of us are used to camping the valley, so we all had to find spots that we wanted and where he wanted us in. You see, I was headed one way, I came back, I decided to go to a different bush. Oh, that wasn't going to work because I wasn't going to have shots, so here, there's a bush up here, I'll go up here. Brits was doing the same thing, trying to find the best spot. Our type 64 spots there, type 64. I remember, they've got three type 64s, so that's just one. There's also two Kramis on the loose. Pretty sure at this point they're not coming Valley. Um, we don't reposition though because we're still in a decent position to defend if they come the other way. Tank is set up in such a way that if somebody comes up the lake road, he's gonna put a shot in their face and that's what happens here. The type reveals himself and bang, tank gets a shot into him. Okay, you're not pushing there. So at this point, then tank is shot out from the tank over in the corner where he clicks, so he knows approximately where some of their tanks are at this point. And we type, um, spot the other type. Unfortunately, we don't get as many shots into him as we would like. I get spotted and pay for it. So. The worst part about this at this point in time is the fact that we are cornered. Um, in this game, map control is important, and they have complete map control. Um, the other thing, though, is that it's hard to dig people out of a good camp. So while map control is really good, it's also really difficult to dig people out of a good camp. So here we are in what we think is a good camp. 
and it's up to them to try to dig us out. That type up on the road there, on the Valley Road keeps spotting us. People are shooting at me constantly, even if I'm not spotted. They're just they're shooting all the places where they know people usually hide, and they're hoping they get lucky. Um, that's what their level of skill and experience tells them. I mean, they know tanks are going to be here. It doesn't hurt them to waste a little bit of ammunition on it. And actually, you're going to see us very shortly do something similar to that. So, and now we're like, okay, we, we know there's some tanks over on this side. Besides the two types, we've been shot at by the 3485, we believe. Um, we don't, I'm not sure if we got shot at by the Cromwells. So, tank calls to have one of our Cromwells on the Type 64 go push that Type 64 and take them out. It's an example of what we call an overmatch. And the hope is we're pretty confident nobody else is over there. And that they can take out the two on one, can easily take out the one, the, the other tank. So, while we're doing that, Cromwell makes an appearance, get a shot into him, they get a couple into me. But again, this, this isn't about me. This is about tanks calling here. So you see him clicking. He, he's telling us there's a tank over there. Or if that was me clicking, it was me telling him I got shot from over there. And every now and then the Krami pokes out enough where he gets shot. Another spot on that Type 64 there. You see at the top of the map, our Cromwell and our type are taking on their type. There ended up, I believe, being two types down there. And uh, Merrick took out one of them. And at the last second, the tank tells him not to take out, not to follow around on the other one. Because that's just a bad, a, a bad idea. We don't have enough of their tanks spotted to be chasing tanks blindly like that. So Merrick lets him go and our guys retreat. They did their job, they took out one of the tanks. One of ours ended up really low health, which is another reason why we recalled them. I should say why a tank recalled them. These guys are just kind of keeping us spotted and playing with us for a little bit. We're, and we're up a tank. We can't get shots on that Type 64, he keeps hiding behind the house. And tank tells Brits, who's got our artillery, he says, take out that Type 64. He's not going to move. He says, I know he's not going to move. He's just going to stay right there take him out. And you see a little RD trace line there. And boom. Type 64 is dead. So now we're up by two tanks. They still have most of their power left. But we still have most of our speed left. Thought was down on the... K six seven area has now come all the way back around, and he's in the he's in the valley. But at this point, we're calling our Type sixty four back, and we want to get ready to do a push on what we think is the two Cromwells. We think that's an overmatch, especially with the thirty forty five over on the left, and we're up by two tanks. The type is back far enough. We decide to go. Uh, we spot the P forty three on the way. I'm thinking I'm in the back. By the time I get there, there's not going to be anything left, so I shoot the P forty three. And I back up a little bit, and that was a bad decision because it's backed right up into the Type 64 and the 3045. Tank calls, push the P43, we have the overmatch, get them. If you have shots on the crown, we'll take it on that, but shoot the, kill the P43 and get safe. Because there's still an awful lot of tanks, we don't know where they are, and we know they're better than us, so kill the P43 and get safe. Kill the P43. And then... Merrick and Scott Mitch circle around the rock. I think they were hoping to catch sights of the Cromwell. Um, our other uh, 3045s are already safe. So we have five tanks, so there are four. And again, we think we know where they are. But we know where the Type 64 is. Pretty sure the 3045 is going to be over there. We don't know where the two Cromwells are. So we gather our forces. And in we go before those Cromwells can gather up with them. Uh, we know that one's going to take at least a little bit to come, come back. <clears throat> so Tank is having us push. 
target the 3045. Nobody's getting good shots. Then as soon as we can see the Type 64, that's an excellent alternative target if we can take him out because he's a gun. Um, we pause here. Probably shouldn't have paused here. Everybody should have kept going. They got hung up on the guy that got trapped. The tank and Scott are sniping. They take out the 3045. Finish off the Type 64. Brits finishes him off. And in that, the Cromwell that was on the lake road, he came back down and he gets spotted. We know he's there. Brits has way healthier the tank. Tank's not going out there to chase him. Um, Brits says, I have health. He's going to go out there and chase him, not knowing where the other Cromwell is. And Tank finishes him off, gets shot by the other Cromwell, who reveals himself when he shoots. So now we have our two tanks going to hunt down the other Cromwell. And if he decides to run here, there's only a minute left, he could very easily hide from us for a minute. Unfortunately, he's spotted, and he has a lot of difficulty getting unspotted. Brits just keeps shooting him over and over. He was unable to get out from behind whatever rock he was behind. And finally, Brits finishes him off. So I just wanted to show you how a well-called and well-executed game can be. Watching, I appreciate all the views I get. Um, I love doing this. I love tier six skirmishes. It's what I get into the game for. Watching the professionals play the seven v seven format um, with the strategy and the tactics involved. Um, you can depend on your teammates, hopefully, and sometimes even the enemy's predictable. I love sharing it with you guys. I hope that my insights have helped your game somewhat or helped your strategies or your tactics. Um, I hope it doesn't help you against us, but I hope it helps you overall. And again, thank you for watching and see you on the battlefield.